Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and um, just want to show you a little bit of what an eclipse can do on the medium wave band. I left my SDR on with the recording of OBS Studio. Um, I did not do a you know band recording like some do because my PC is not powerful enough; it doesn't have enough disk space. Also, so um, what I did is just leave leave it there and I chose one frequency which was 880 New York so this is the slider here 880 New York now notice these are what we have as the spikes of stations right now from about 700 to a little more than 1550 kilohertz and this is right now on the clock at 130 p.m. that's two hours before the eclipse hits. Now let's move forward slowly and now it's 1.45 p.m. 2 p.m. and we look at the little spikes if there's any changes but you will notice this as we actually approach the eclipse notice all the spikes that are showing up here like in nighttime when you do the xing this is F half an hour before the total solar eclipse here. This is 10 minutes, a little more than 10 minutes before. Look at all the stations that popped up. Pretty amazing. This is while we are just, just past total solar eclipse. Look at all the spikes of all the AM stations. We have WCBS that's starting to come in a little bit. So let's move it just, say, a little more if we can. There we go. Here, 37. This is 10 minutes past the maximum here in Montreal. All right, very good. Matt Rosenberg, thank you. It's 337 at WCBS. We're sponsored in part by Jackpocket. Jackpocket is the number one lottery app that lets you order official state lottery games on your phone. Use the code radio. So it has the eclipse hit, and after the eclipse, I had a portable radio, the XH Data um, D109 with me, and wow, the uh, WCBS was booming in like in the evening. So it's just amazing what we see from the, uh, the solar eclipse results. Um, look at that medium wave band, just like at nighttime. And you saw that there was kind of a pattern. The ones here on the higher frequency started first, and then there was the lower frequencies. So let's move a little more. Now we're at 45, 20 minutes past uh, the uh, totality here. CBS kind of not there, but still a lot of spikes. A little further. A little further here. So this is at 4 p.m., which is uh, 35 minutes. And look at this. The, the peaks are slowly declining and moving away. And here's almost an hour after the totality in Montreal. Stations are fading out again. And when we go back to, this is 4.30, more than an hour after. So you see that there's, uh, the stations are disappearing from the band after that. And then we'll have the, the, the peaks come back because we're moving here slowly towards uh, the sunset. So this is the evening look. So this is what it looks like in the evening. So this here, we're at 9 to 30 p.m. here. And this is what it looked like pretty much during peak totality. Not bad. Pretty amazing. So there's definitely a change in the peaks. And uh, it shows really, really well in this recording. So here, this recording lasts, what, 12 hours, 13 hours? Um, and because uh, I just let it go and I didn't come home from like late in the afternoon but it's, it's very cool to see the peaks 
of the stations and WCBS coming in. Just amazing. Dear Calvary Hospital, my father Curtis Moore is my hero. He led an exceptional life of self-sacrifice. A Margaret Point Marine, a New York City... So yes, definitely major changes while the eclipse was happening in propagation. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.